Let me welcome you my dear students. My name is Saima and this is your class of teaching of literature. This is our first learning session with BS English 8th semester. My dear students, in this session we would like to learn teaching of literature. And the way we go ahead, the concept is that we would try to find out the teaching of literature or the context of teaching learning of English in Pakistan. So my dear students, this is about the introduction. Now we are going to discuss the outline that today we are going to discuss the definition of teaching or the teaching and characteristics of teaching, a difference between the language learning and acquisition and reasons to learn English and the context of teaching and learning. So my dear students, let's start with the definition of teaching or what is an effective teaching. My dear students, let's discuss that what is teaching. Teaching is science as well as art. For effective teaching, teacher has to follow some specific principles based on certain precise knowledge. Let me discuss if a teacher explains very precisely or he explains or we can simply say that he tells everything to the uh, students that is called an, an efficient teacher. So my dear students, a teacher adopt different uh, techniques and different methods in a classroom. So that is why we can call it the it is science. In this sense, teaching is science. In order to teach effectively, teacher has to adopt varied circumstances by using different techniques. For example, if a teacher calls a student and asks to conclude the lecture in front of the class, it is the technique of a teacher to recall the whole lecture in the class or he just repeat the important points in front of the class to recall the whole lecture for students. We can simply say that it will um, means it he uses these techniques to remember or remembrance of the uh, means the uh, important point for students. Means a teacher use or adopt different techniques after examining the uh, knowledge of the students in a classroom. So my dear students, teacher has to develop or cultivate his or her own style of teaching in order to become an efficient teacher. Means if a teacher explains everything to the students or uh, we, we can simply say that teaching is a process of sharing knowledge instead of showering knowledge means he just want to uh, share the knowledge with the students or uh, he just explains each and everything after the full uh, full of background knowledge or fully grip of background knowledge so this is little bit about the teaching let's discuss the definition of teaching my dear students according to burton means teaching method is the Stimulation, guide, means the guidance, direction and encouragement for learning. Means if a teacher encourage a student for the purpose of learning or he guide or direct or stimulate the students that is called an effective teaching or teaching. If we talk about the next definition that is the Yakam and Simpson. So according to them, the teaching is the means whereby the society trains the young in a specific or selected environment to adjust themselves to the world in which they live as quickly as possible. For example, means teaching is the process of training the uh, young people in a, in a society means uh, the society trains the young people uh, to adjust in a specific environment that is called teaching 
if uh, the next definition is the flando definition and according to him the teaching is an interaction process for example we can simply say that if a teacher is good in uh, interaction it means he is using teaching technique uh, we can say that the interaction means participation of both teacher and students and both get benefit of this the interaction takes place for achieving desired objectives my dear students i told you earlier that teaching is the process of sharing knowledge instead of showering knowledge we can share knowledge when both uh, we can say that the both participant interact with each other means they share their knowledge so uh, this is the definition of teaching that teaching um, the first definition is that method means teaching method is the stimulation guidance direction and encouragement for learning the second is the teaching is the means whereby the society train the young in specific or selected environment to adjust themselves to the world in which they live as quickly as possible the third definition is the teaching is an interaction process interaction means the participation of both people means the teachers and the students and both get benefit for uh, for uh, means or the benefit by this so these are the definition of teaching so let's discuss the characteristics of teaching so my dear students the characteristics of teaching are as follows number 1 means teaching is an effective interaction between teacher and students if both teacher and student interact with each other that means that they are involved in teaching process the second one is the teaching is both art as well as science how means teaching is an art as it calls for the exercise of talent and creativity so teaching as science involves a repertory of techniques means procedures and skills for example a teacher uh, experiment in a classroom how means he uses different techniques or methods for the students so teaching as science involves a repertories of techniques procedures and skills that can be systematically studied described and improved so we can say that a good teacher is one who adds creativity and inspiration to the basic repertories so my dear students the third the uh, characteristics of teaching is that teaching has various forms for example formal as well as informal training and conditioning and brainstorming means a teacher use different techniques for example brainstorming means he just call the students and um, ask a sudden uh, question and uh, means tell them that how they can brainstorm and how the means it is depend on means it is dependent on the teacher that how he interact with students and how he uh, means he uses the creativity in the students or he uh, he can just uh, they find out how they can use the creativity power so my dear students the next technique is the teaching is dominated by the skill of communication means if a teacher is a good communicator means he is using the teaching techniques means this is the characteristics of a teaching means if a teacher is not a good communicator means if he cannot communicate in a good way that means he is not a good teacher so the next technique is teaching is a tripolar process means how the three poles are educational objectives learning experiences and change in behavior means we can simply say that means teaching is a process of three poles like in teaching we can say simply that a teacher gains or or uh, means it is a teacher 
who uh, means uses the educational objectives or gets the objectives and learning experience and change the behavior of the student so the next characteristics of teaching is that teaching should be well planned and the teacher should decide the objective methods of teaching and evaluation techniques so the next one is the teaching is suggesting and not dictating as i told you that teaching is a process of sharing knowledge instead of showering knowledge so dear students that good teaching is democratic and teacher respects the students how means if a teacher is a good listener it means he is uh, means he is not the using the democratic techniques means he is not a democrat so he encourage them to ask questions answers answer questions and discuss things means it is simply that if a teacher is good in communication and engage in student in a certain technique or in a certain topic that is called means it is a good technique of teaching means he is a good teacher of something or any subject for example we are going to discuss the literature it is the ability of a teacher to engage the student and just ask them to uh, they are freely ask questions and answer their questions and discuss different things so these are some characteristics of teaching now we are going to discuss the difference between language learning and acquisition so some people thinks then uh, that language learning and acquisition is the same thing so let me tell you that they the both things are different like if we talk about the learning means second language is developed through formal study of structure means we learn something in a formal structure if we talk about the acquisition in a uh, second lang language or english learning so it follows a pattern similar to the first language means if a student comes in the class and he learns without uh, a formal study or a formal structure of the study means that is called his acquisition process if we talk about the next means language learned through formal instruction that is called learning process instead of acquisition means language is naturally acquired for example uh, in a classroom a student goes there and learn through a formal structure of study and learns through formal instruction if a person goes the uh, means we can simply say that he goes abroad and learn english language without formal structure and without any in, uh, instruction that is called acquisition means he just acquired that language so my dear students the next one is the language learning occurs at conscious level if a person consciously learn something that is called learning if a person acquire or occur, means acquisition is the language acquisition occurs at subconscious level means he is not conscious at this level he learn this he learn something subconsciously that is called the acquisition so dear students language learning develops explicit knowledge of language while acquisition means if you talk about the acquisition so language acquisition develops implicit understanding of language structure if we talk about the next characteristics of learning that formal instruction of language structure needed to provide key information without key information it is impossible to learn something if we talk about the acquisition that formal teaching of language structure does not improve acquisition means simple is that you can acquire something without any instruction so that is little bit about the difference between the language learning and language acquisition so dear students let's discuss the reason to learn english why do people learn english 
तो फर्स्ट वन इज दैट इट इज एजेंशियल टू वर्क इफ यू पर्सन वॉन्ट्स टू वर्क इन सम स्पेसिफिक ऑफिस और इन समथिंग सो दैट इज इट इज इम्पॉसिबल हाउ ही कैन अंडरस्टूड और ही कैन अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग्स विदाउट लर्निंग इंग्लिश सो इट इज नेसेसरी फॉर अ पर्सन टू लर्न इंग्लिश फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ वर्क द नेक्स्ट वन इज इट इज द यूनिवर्सल लैंग्वेज एज यू पीपल नो इंग्लिश इज अ यूनिवर्सल लैंग्वेज सो इफ ही जस्ट वॉन्ट टू मीन्स ही जस्ट वॉन्ट टू वर्क एट ऑफिस सॉरी इफ ही वॉन्ट टू वर्क इन ऑफिस एंड ही जस्ट वॉन्ट टू मीन्स वर्क ऑन लैपटॉप और सम कंप्यूटर सो और डेस्कटॉप so it is necessary to the person to learn english because it is a universal language so uh, the next one is it will open the door of a new cultures as you people know if you want to learn about some culture or some cultures you need to learn the language first so it opens the door of new cultures for the people uh the next one is the you will travel comfortably for example if you want to go abroad and you just uh, you are going to visit someone or something so it is most important for the person to learn english because uh, means while in good communication he can com- uh, travel comfortably so the next one is it is most learned language as you people know everyone just means there are many people who just want to learn english means for the purpose of learning means he, uh, they just want to learn a new language they just want to learn that uh, the different cultures so it is the most learned language means every uh, if we can say that for example means urdu urdu is not a learned language means all the people learn it but it is not the most learned language it is the english that is the most learned language means people learn it and so you can communicate your message to other so the next one is the art and anglophone literature so english is an art means it is an art in anglophone literature means you can learn about something with you can not learn about uh, something like is literature of english people without knowing english or without the information of english language the next one is uh, uh, means it eliminates weakness means if a person is good in communication and good in english communication or he can we can say that he, the person is fluent in english it can eliminate the weakness of that person because the person is so confident so uh, it enhance the uh, strength of the person and eliminate the weakness of that person so this is about the reasons to learn english language so the next one is the context of teaching and learning so let's discuss about the context so my dear students if we talk about the context that context of teaching and learning includes anything in our surrounding it includes environment in which we are living so we can simply say that it is the environment which plays an important role the first one is the physical context the second one is the social context institutional context and the personal context so these are some context which are included in teaching and learning let's discuss it one by one so the first one is the physical context we are physically active in various works in our role playing in our life for example we are engaging with our friends with our officers in our administrative staff or means in our administration staff so we can physically feel them touch them so th- that is why we can say that these are our physical environment which plays a vital role in teaching and learning while living in a society a person becomes keen observer because he observes many things through the physical touch or feel the next one is the social context we socially engage with our surrounding how we meet new peoples 
फॉर्मल और इनफॉर्मल मीन्स इट डजेंट मैटर वी इंगेज विद पीपल और नॉट बट मैनी पर्सन आर ऑब्जर्विंग ईच अदर्स एंड ट्राई टू गेट सपोर्ट एंड इम्प्रूव देयर टीम वर्क एज वेल सो दिस इज द सोशल कॉन्टेक्स्ट दैट इज वेरी एजेंशियल इन टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग द नेक्स्ट वन इज द इंस्टीट्यूशनल कॉन्टेक्स्ट इट इज ए मेन फैक्टर ऑफ टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग हाउ इट इंक्लूड्स स्कूल कॉलेजेस यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑफिस एंड मदरसाज these are institutions where a person gets his or her education we can simply say that they have mentored there to teach them it might be a teacher a guider or a supervisor they want from students to get specific goal there so a student learns many thing from institute but in offices he or she learns other things regarding society and basically practical work as well so the next one is the personal factor so when a student is personally involved with certain works and gets experience that is called the personal factor when it means he or she is experiencing problems and solutions so basically the person is learning through practice and practical so these are some factors include in means factors or context include in teaching and learning so my dear student this is about our today's lecture thank you so much allah hafiz